In this video, we develop the statistics of using the linear calibration line. We have four calibration points, and we will calculate the sample size in E3 using the count function, and we will calculate the slope of a best fit straight line in E4 using the slope function and highlighting the known y's and the known x's. In this particular worksheet, we are assuming that we're carrying out a free fit, best fit straight line, in that we are calculating both the slope and the intercept. So we will calculate the best fit intercept, again with known y's and known x's, we assume now that we make an experimental measurement of an unknown y value so that we can use the calibration line to calculate its equivalent x value. And in measuring the y value, we assume that we will make three replicates of the unknown value. So k in this case is three. And that the mean or average of those three values gives us a value of 0.63. Using the slope and intercept of the best fit straight line, we can use the straight line equation to calculate the equivalent value of x knowing the value of y. So we enter the rearranged straight line equation, which will give the y value minus the intercept value and all divided by the slope, giving a best estimate for the unknown x value of 16.859. We now wish to calculate the uncertainty in this best estimate for x. And to do that, we will first of all need to calculate the standard error of regression using the XL function STEYX, again identifying y values and x values. We also need the mean or average of the y values of 0.6. And we must also calculate the variance of the x values. And this is equal to the variance, and we'll use the sample variance, of the x values. We now calculate the standard error ux in the measurement of our x value and we will do that in cell i4 but we'll enter the equation for clarity in the function bar as v equal to so we start with the standard error of regression which is in e10 which is a measure of the uncertainty in the calibration in the y direction but then we will divide by the slope, which will convert this into an uncertainty in the x direction. We'll put brackets around this value. And then we need to multiply by the square root. And we have to take into account the numbers of measurements made to convert a standard deviation into a standard uncertainty. So first of all, we will take one over the number of replicate measurements of the y value, which is in E8, and we will have 1 over the number of measurements made in the calibration line, which is in E3. So this gives the standard uncertainty in the middle of the calibration line. But as the intercept moves further away from the center of the calibration line, the uncertainty becomes greater. And then we have to add this additional term, which first of all is dependent on how far the measured y value, E7, is away from the central y value in the calibration, E11. And this difference here is squared. So it doesn't matter whether the difference is positive or negative. And then this is divided by the slope squared, the power of 2, which is multiplied 
by the number of degrees of freedom that we have for this uncertainty, which is the number of data points minus one, and finally multiplied by the variance in the x value. So this gives our standard error in the value of x. We need now to multiply this by a t value to get the confidence deviation. This is given by a two-tailed t value and for a 95% confidence interval we must enter a probability of 0.05 and in this case the number of degrees of freedom is the number of calibration values, in this case minus 2. And then the confidence deviation is the product of the t value and the standard error of 3.21. So this confidence deviation is the uncertainty on either side of the mean value. So we can express the confidence interval of our estimate of the x value as being the directly calculated intercept value in E9. And this is going to be plus or minus the calculated confidence deviation. Ideally, in our calibration line, we are measuring a y value which is very close to the center of the calibration line. And this means that in our standard uncertainty formula, this term at the end of the square root brackets is no longer applicable because E7 and E11 are very close together. So this means that we could just take the first part of this equation and use it again to give an approximated value for the standard uncertainty, assuming that the intercept occurs in the central region of the calibration line. And in this case, we would use the standard error in E5 rather than the standard error in E4. In this case, this gives a simpler calculation for the standard uncertainty. An alternative possibility is that we have an exact value for the intercept Y value. This would be equivalent to having a very large number of replicates, i.e. a very large K value. And we could repeat this calculation by copying this formula into the next column, but we do not need the 1 over 8 element which can be removed, and this gives the standard uncertainty assuming an exact value of yx. And recalculating these other values, and we end up with a smaller confidence deviation because of the reduced uncertainty. The other possible scenario in this form of analysis is that instead of performing a free fit calibration in which we fit both the values and the slope of the intercept, we may be just performing a slope fit in which we assume that the calibration line must pass through the origin of the graph so that the intercept will be zero and that we are then just calculating the slope of the best fit straight line. We can do this by using the Excel function line straight and identifying y and x values and putting two zeros here as additional arguments to define a zero intercept. We can retain the same calculation for the value of x because we have entered a zero for the intercept value. However, we need to change the calculation of the standard uncertainty in that we now enter the distance of the y value E7 from the origin rather than the mean of the y values but otherwise this expression is the same and all other cal calculations are then the same. 